Yo, dudes, Oren here. I've been reading your uh, uh, articles and been watching uh, your YouTube videos on the mock drafts, and I decided, you know what? Time to get into the game. I'm going to do a, a, a NFL two, 2023 mock draft for the Detroit Lions, and this is just what I would do. It's not what I think the Lions will do or anything like that. So uh, let's get into it, and I'll show you guys uh, what I did. So the way I think of the first round, at least the uh, top part and the middle part of the first round, I think of trying to get the best uh, BPA, uh, best you know players available at premium positions. Those positions typically being quarterback, cornerback, offensive tackle, edge rusher, and as of last year, wide receiver. So those are the kind of the areas that, that I uh, targeted there. And uh, I I ruled out, um, you know, edge rusher because the Lions drafted three of them last year with Aiden Hutchinson and Josh Pascal and James Houston. And I know that you can never uh, have enough edge rushers, but uh, I think um, at least for now, uh, they should be a set unless they decide to draft uh, one more at some point um, in this draft. And uh, the way the first five picks fell in this board, it went uh, CJ Stroud, Bryce Young, and then Will Anderson to Arizona, uh, Anthony Richardson to the Colts, and then Jalen Carter to the Seahawks, which is what I honestly think is how the first five uh, picks are going to play out. So I decided to target cornerback, and it was a choice for me between uh, uh, Christian Gonzalez out of Oregon and Devon Witherspoon out of Illinois. Um you can't really go wrong with either of them, in my opinion. Uh, Joey Porter Jr. is also in the mix there, but my hunch is he, he'll probably want to go to the team that you know his dad played for where he won a Super Bowl in Ford Field with the Pittsburgh Steelers. So uh, Christian Gonzalez has a lot of good build. He's really good physical and, and speedy and all that. Um, he can play any scheme. He mainly plays uh, zone, though, but he probably could play press man if – they wanted to based on uh, everything I've heard, but Christian, uh, I mean, uh, Witherspoon, however, has a lot of experience playing press man, which would definitely fit well with uh, um, the, what the Lions are trying to do on defense. And he is five nine or five eleven and a half, I believe, which is basically six foot. So, um, so I think you know either one of those players should be important for competing against uh, some of the wide receivers that the NFC North has to offer uh, twice a year, you know, like Jefferson and uh, Christian Watson, who I think is going to be really good. And then the guy that the Chicago bears just acquired in their trade. So for the number six pick, I went with Devin. Uh, I went with Witherspoon there. So, and plus I don't think it's a coincidence that he wears number 31 for uh, Illinois, just like how Kirby Joseph wears 31 for the Lions. So something tells me he wants to get reunited with his teammate and, uh, um, you know, things will be really good for that. So on to the 18th pick, um, Kalijah Kansi was available there, and I know he's been a popular pick. Um, here's the thing, though. I think a lot of the um, players that Lions covet are projected to go kind of in that late first round, early second round. So it was a priority for me to try to um, acquire picks in that area. And plus, in my opinion, and we're talking about like lower first round here, so that's kind of where you start getting into positions of need. Um, in my opinion, linebacker is arguably the most uh, important uh, need, especially like linebackers who will be able to help out with, uh, you know, neutralizing the mobile quarterbacks. Um especially since the Lions are scheduled to play several of them uh, this upcoming season, uh, including Patrick Mahomes. And not only that, but being able to cover against good uh, tight ends like Travis Kelsey. So what I wound up doing, I traded down with the New Orleans Saints for their uh, tw 29th pick and their 40th pick to be able to acquire picks in those range I, I was talking about. I sent them uh the 18th pick and i also sent over one of their players uh jeff one of our players jeff okuda thinking you know what we already got witherspoon okuda is going to be coming up on a contract year um you know he's had his ups and downs detroit in detroit and 
Um, New Orleans just happens to need a safety. And I would think that they might think they can have Okuda transition into safety, considering his best skills at cornerback are, um, you know, important skills for a safety. So that would probably be what the Saints were thinking there. So he'd be part of the uh, package. And so that was the trade. And as you can already see, the pick I went with at round 129 for the linebacker was Jack Campbell out of Iowa. You know, he's not around good corner. He's really good in coverage, which uh, will help out, you know, with the Lions and uh, with the passing game and, you know, helping stop in the passes and especially with the Titans, like I mentioned. And, you know, he's got the intangibles that Brad Holmes is talking about and he's a you know good team leader. And uh, um, let's be honest, we all kind of like the idea of, you know, uh, we talk about Dan Campbell all the time. So um, hearing uh, Jack Campbell's going for the blitz or Jack Campbell gets the sack. Campbell's chasing him down. So um, I do think Campbell will probably be a, prior, a priority there. And that's kind of the range that they are hoping to get him. Because honestly, when I do the mock drafts, he always tends to go to the Pittsburgh Steelers at pick 32. So I got him at round one and 29 there. So. Um, the first second round uh, pick, there's three second round picks that I have now because part of the trade that I did there. That is where I addressed the depth at offensive guard. Because um, as we know, Halid Pudi Vaitai uh, had an injury last year and, you know, he's had to restructure his contract, you know, for coming back uh, this next year. So he'll probably, you know, play. But in case he gets injured, we've got to have somebody there. Plus, Jonah Jackson, the other guard, is coming up on a contract year. So I address that here. Osiris Torrance was already off the board for me, which would have been my top uh, preference. So I went with the next best guy, which was Steve Avila, uh, guard at uh, TCU. So, you know, the offensive line overall is, I think, the foundation that the Lions are trying to build and sustain for the success that they want and, you know, for the running game and, you know, making sure that they have that to be able to set up the play action pass and to be able to continue to get the ball to their receivers well with Amon Ross St. Brown and uh, um, Jamison Williams and not only protecting uh, Jared Goff uh, back there. So, you know, the all of our linemen are the key there and we got to have, you know, plan A, plan B, plan C as best we can. So, it's important to get a guard higher up here. So I honestly don't know too much about uh, Steve Avila, but um, I do believe he's a really good uh, player. So he'd be a good pick in that spot. So, <clears throat> so uh, the round two pick 48, this is where I address uh, the defensive interior. Um, you know, I, I elected not to get Cansey at 18. Um, the edge rusher from Northwestern who could also play interior, um, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce his name, but it's double A is my nickname for him because first name, last names start with A. So um, he would have been my next best uh, person to get, but he was long gone by then. So I went with uh, Keanu Benton out of Wisconsin, who, um, from what I've read, he's got, um, you know, pass rushing upside, which is what we're looking for for that other spot on the defensive line. So he's really kind of a nose guard like throughout his career, but he's been developing more and more as a pass rusher and getting more, um, you know, pass rushing moves on him. And I think uh, those things are going to be important to look at. So there, and he should be able to be good enough to stop against the run. So the alternative would have been uh, the, the big guy from a bit, uh, Baylor, uh, Ike, uh, I think his name is. And uh, you know, he's like a big guy and uh, he'd be good for like probably just the, stopping the run game only. And he'd be like an Aline McNeil type of guy. So it'd be like having two of them there. So uh, Benton is who I, uh, I can't know Benton is who I went with here. So, and then this is where the last second round pick I had, I addressed the quarterback situation. I went with a Tanner McKee here at this point. I thought, okay, Hennon Hooker was also available, but it's, you're thinking about what you want to do with your quarterback. Do you want to draft a quarterback that you can develop and has mobile speed and who will be the successor to Jared Goff? And if so, then Hendon Hooker would definitely be your pick there. Um, but if you want to get somebody who would be really good now, who would 
probably be your permanent backup because you're sticking with Jared Goffney as the guy. I think Tanner McKee would be the pick here for that. And I had been uh, on drafting a new quarterback. I've been on that train for a while, but Jared Goff won me over right around the game against Jacksonville. So, um, but you know, Jared Goff has gotten injured from us before. So if that happens here in the future, then I think Tanner McKee would be the best option to step up there. You know, he's a very accurate passer and he's played in an NFL scheme already. So um, in my, I know we talk about mobile quarterbacks all the time, which McKee isn't, but in my opinion, one of the highest qualities of a quarterback that you need is accuracy, especially when you have good weapons like Amon Rice St. Bound and Jamison Williams. So, uh, and Tanner McKee is one of the, more accurate uh, quarterbacks uh, in this draft. So um, for, and plus we have a good offensive line, so you shouldn't w have to worry too many times about getting sacked. So I went with uh, Tanner McKee here. And then as I've alluded to before, the ability to stop the mobile quarterbacks when they're running with the ball Um was one of our biggest weaknesses last year. And we're going to be facing a lot more of that this year. And on defense, I think that's, we need all the help we can get. That's arguably like the top priority to be able to stop those quarterbacks that, that can do that. Not to mention anybody else who decides to run with the ball. So, you know, if you get a good uh, defensive lineman who can uh, rush the quarterback uh, and get through, as well as a linebacker who's also capable to do that. And then as well as a safety, then all three, those type of positions should all be able to help contain that. So that's why I went safety here with uh, Jamie Robinson out of Florida State, who should be really quick, you know, especially around the line of scrimmage to be able to do that stuff with. And uh, not only that, but he's also really good at tackler, which I think is a prerequisite when uh, you're playing for the Detroit Lions and their defense. If you remember hard uh, during hard knocks, uh, one of the things that Dan Campbell uh, told his players was defense was basically two things, pursuit and tackling. So that's uh, Jamie Robinson there. And I think he would be good at that. So moving on to the later picks, um, uh, the day three picks. I don't believe that we need a tight end because, you know, we don't use the tight end much for the receiving aspect of the game. And, I personally think James Mitchell is going to develop and emerge to be the starting tight end, um, even though, you know, the Zilstras and Brock Wright and, you know, all of them did a really good job last year. But I think it could never hurt to have an, another inline blocking a tight end that can, you know, help with blocking against the edge rushers um, when we need to. So, like I said, I don't think we need a tight end, but if they do decide to address it, probably in the later rounds. So for that, I went with the Clemson tight end, Davis Allen, and got him there uh, to be able to have that depth um, for, you know, inline blocking when we need it. So, um, yeah, not much uh, more to say about that. And then and then I also addressed uh, running back there, Keaton Mitchell, uh, East Carolina, from looking at all the running backs throughout the board. He definitely seems like one that would be very dynamic. And, you know, if Swift doesn't wind up uh, staying uh, past this year or next year, um, you know, then he could be a good uh, successor to him because he's got the dynamic. He can catch passes. He's only 5'8", though, but, uh, you know, it helps add depth there. So, and my personal opinion on Swift, um, I do think now that they've uh, replaced the turf uh, for Ford Field and the practice field, I think you're going to see him injured less often. And I think we're going to see a lot of the um, amazing Swift stuff that you saw at the beginning of the season. I think we're going to see that more often through this year. So I still have faith that Swift is going to do good for us for this year. That's the upcoming year and next year. So, but in case he doesn't, this would be the contingency plan with uh, Keaton Mitch Mitchell there. And for my final pick, uh, haven't addressed wide receiver receiver as a top priority, and I listed it as a premium uh, need. Um, but the Lions brought back Marvin Jones Jr. to be able to fill that X role, and uh, so you know that kind of helps uh, with 
you know, the priority with that priority there, but you know, could have a, if you wanted to get a new one, um, you know, what you look for in an extra receiver, you want somebody who's at least six, three or six, four, six, five. Um, and that would be really good at contested catches. And for this, it came down to a choice for me between uh, uh, shorter from Florida um, and uh, Bryce Ford Wheaton from West Virginia. And when I compared their stats on the PFF uh, details uh, thingy, it, it mentioned that we uh, Bryce Ford Wheaton had, uh, I think 18 contested catches, which was tied fourth, which was like higher rank than like a lot of people there. So I went with him as the final pick there. So, yeah, that was uh, my reasoning for that. So how would you grade this uh, uh, mock draft? This is just a casual Detroit Lions fan uh, like myself, just spitballing my ideas there and uh, um, that sort of thing. Uh, let me know uh, what you would think of it. Well, what would you do differently? Is there anything that you uh, that I did that you thought could be a smart move? Or, um, you know, just uh, let me know. Um, Less than a month away from uh, the NFL draft. Go Lions, one pride.